My name is Kylie Thurston and for our presentation my group's topic is the animal rights movement. I'm going to be talking about what the animal rights movement is. So the animal rights movement is an idea that urges humans to not interfere with animals. Many people in the world believe that animals should be able to live free and even though they are not human, animal have, animals have rights too. Although many people believe that animals have rights, some argue that they don't. So um, there are many supporters and there are many critics of the animal rights movement. And um, so those who oppose the animal rights movement say that animals lack the mental abilities that humans possess and that they are lesser than. According to Sean Klein on the Atlas Society, legal action should not be taken when an animal is mistreated, which ultimately downgrades the animal's rights. So along with the critics, there's defenders of the animal rights movement, and the argument made by Reagan and Singer on the Atlas Society is that if laws were in place for animal rights, human would be, humans would be less likely to abuse and mistreat their animals if there are consequences. The Atlas Society points out that animal rights are important because animals cannot express their needs and take action as freely as humans can. So, although animals obviously don't have the same exact rights that humans would have, many people believe that they should have rights and that abusing animals should be illegal. Well, there should be um, consequences, while many believe that animals shouldn't because they are lesser than humans because of the actions that they're not able to take and defend themselves. All right, so now we're going to talk about the hardships that animal, animals face. There are many different types of hardships that animals are subjected to every day, but there are four main types of hardships that animals go through, and those are animal cruelty, animal breeding, animal poaching, animal testing, and experimenting. So, the first of these is animal cruelty. According to dictionary.com, the definition of cruelty to animal, animals is the crime of inflicting physical pain, suffering, or death on an animal, usually a tame one, beyond necessity for normal discipline. It can include neglect that is so monstrous, withholding food and water, that the animal has suffered, died, or been put in imminent danger of death. Other hardships animals face, such as poaching, testing for human products, and most forms of breeding, all fall under animal cruelty. Animal cruelty can take many different forms, and the problem is growing ever larger on a yearly basis. As of March 2017, the RSPCA, the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, in the United Kingdom was investigating more than 150,000 cases of animal abuse. Calls to the hotline increased by 5% from the previous year. So here's some facts about animal cruelty. Just about all animals are subject to many different forms of cruelty from humans. The most abused animals tend to be dogs, cats, horses, and livestock. The abuse can be attributed to animal hoarding, dog fighting, factory farming of animals, bird trading, and many other travesties. It's been estimated that there are 900 to 2,000 new cases every year of animal hoarding in the U.S., with 250,000 animals falling victim. <coughs> Dog fighting became prevalent in the U.S. after the Civil War, with professional pits proliferating in, or proliferating in the 1860s. Today, the ASPCA estimates that ten, tens of thousands of dog fights take place every year in the U.S. alone. Many of those fights are of the professional variety, which means that hundreds of thousands of dollars could change hands for entrance fees and wagers. There's numerous investigations into factory farms, that revealed abuses ranging from beating and kicking animals to using clubs and other weapons on them. These animals are often denied food and water as well as fresh air. More than 50% of the fur in the U.S. comes from China, where millions of dogs and cats are often bled to death and skinned alive for their fur. Chinese fur is often mislabeled, so if you wear any fur, there's no sure way of knowing whose skin you're in. Now. The next form of animal abuse is animal breeding. Now, not all forms of animal cruelty boil down to just physical and emotional abuse, but can also take the form of genetic abuse as well. This takes place in the form of selective breeding for purebred animals like dogs. 
Uh, for example, puppy mills are large-scale commercial dog breeding operations that put greater priority on profits than the health of the puppies. Many dogs are plagued with illnesses like kidney or heart disease as a result of the conditions that they're kept in. Thousands of greyhounds die each year, some in the name of selective breeding, which is just trying to you know, breed dogs together to get the perfect dog, which a lot of times involves incest, before they ever touch a racetrack. Many dogs do not make it to the nominal retirement age of four or five. It also manifests with the genetic manipulation of broiler chickens for widespread harvesting. Due to genetic manipulation, 90% of broiler chickens, which are just chickens bred specifically for uh, meat production, have trouble walking. A uh, little fun fact, fish are the most harvested animal in the world, while chickens are the most harvested land animal. Animal breeding and its malevolence has been recently brought to the spotlight by the popular Netflix docuseries Tiger King, Murder, Mayhem, and Madness. Uh, this is actually what inspired us to, for us to do our project on this. Um, and there, there's, there's many individuals involved in the big cat trade that were exposed for breeding their cats inhumanely and without remorse. It is estimated that there are around 5,000 captive tigers in the U.S. alone while there are only approximately 3,900 remaining in the wild. So, the, ne the next form of uh, animal abuse is animal poaching. Uh, poaching has been defined as the illegal hunting or capturing of wild animals, usually associated with land use rights. Wild animals across the world are being poached on a massive scale, with millions of animals being killed or captured in their natural habitats. Some animals, such as birds, reptiles, and primates, are captured live so that they can be kept or sold as exotic pets, while slaughtered animals, on the other hand, have commercial value, such as food, jewelry, decor, or even traditional medicine. So, for example, the ivory tusks of the African elephants are carved into trinkets or display pieces. The scales of uh, pangolins, which are a small anteater type of animal indigenous to Africa, they're ground into powder and consumed for their purpose. Uh, perpetrating healing powers. The meat of apes, snakes, and other bush animals is considered a delicacy in some parts of Africa, but that's also considered poaching. Poaching has a devastating effect on wildlife, and is sometimes the core reason that many different species face extinction or have already gone extinct. This is the case with the African elephant. More than 100,000 of them were killed between 2014 and 2017 for ivory. Poaching has also had a catastrophic impact on rhinos. More than a thousand rhinos are slaughtered a year for their horns. Poaching does not only affect animals, but humans as well. It has been linked to armed militia groups in Africa suspected of trafficking ivory to fund their operations. In Africa, nearly 600 rangers charged with, charged with protecting wildlife were gunned down by poachers between 2009 and 2016 while in the line of duty. In the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the Virunga, the Virunga, sorry, if I butchered that, the Virunga National Park is one of Africa's most dangerous spots for poaching violence, with 170 rangers killed during the past two decades from poachers alone. So, uh, the next form of animal uh, abuses is uh, animal testing, and experimenting. So, testing on animals has been a major form of animal cruelty, and has increased dramatically in the last century. More than 100 million animals suffer and die in the U.S. every year in cruel chemical, drug, food, and cosmetic tests. This also occurs, occurs in medical training exercises, in curiosity, and medical experiments at universities and labs all over the U.S. Exact numbers on the amount of animals subject to testing aren't available because mice, rats, birds, and cold-blooded animals are not even covered by even the minimal protections of the Animal Welfare Act, and therefore they go uncounted as test subjects. Since they are not, since they are not protected, uh, sorry, since they are not protected, this is unfortunately why these animals make up more than 99% of animals used in experiments. Examples of animal tests include forcing mice and rats to inhale toxic fumes, force feeding dogs pesticides, and dripping corrosive chemicals into rabbits' sensitive eyes. Thousands of animals suffer in, suffer in laboratories around the world from human diseases. A lot of these animals suffer from dermatitis due to product exposure and other atrocities. These animals never receive names, receive affection, or experience their natural habitat. 
And the whole thing about animal testing is it's kind of pointless. There's no need for it. Uh, animal testing also proves to be unnecessary in a lot of cases and can be marketed to humans, even if the product proves harmful uh, to the animal. Also, just because a product was shown to be safe when used on animals does not guarantee that it will be safe to use on humans. I mean, we're different species. Um, we now have alternative methods, such as vector cultures, uh, and these provide more accurate results than animal testing because the tests are carried out on human tissue. Uh, there are promising clinical testing results in vitro cultures, <laughs> epidemiological tests, sorry, I'm butchering words today, and other non-animal studies that could actually benefit humans more effectively. This testing not only affects the animals, but also it is used... It is using taxpayer money to indulge in these experiments. The federal government and many health charities waste precious dollars from taxpayers and well-meaning donors on animal experiments at universities and private laboratories across the country. I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the atrocities or, that are uh, happen to animals all over the world. We're going to be discussing the importance of the animal rights movement and what makes this movement so important. So this movement is growing rapidly in pursuit of giving the animals in harm's way a voice in the rights that they deserve. The movement is focused on making the animal-human relationship a positive one instead of what it looks like today. These animal right activists are standing for the fact that animals should not suffer for the benefit of humans, animals need protection from human predators, and that there are alternatives for the eating lifestyle most live by today. And it's not just the eating lifestyle that this movement is standing for. It's also like this picture shows the use that animals are used for experiments, ornaments, clothing, sports, medicine, entertainment. All of these things is what we as a human society have deemed normal to use these animals for and to cause suffering on them for, for the benefit of us as a species. Um, this picture really highlights that these animals are no longer labeled as what they are as a creature. They're labeled as what people and humans have used and made it normal for these animals to be treated as. And this is something that's very important to this movement and what this movement is working so hard for to change that mindset that most people have now in today's society.
Okay, so for this video, I thought it was really important to show a perspective of someone who is actually a part of this movement and is an activist for the animal rights, that he even said himself that he has worked almost his whole life to give these animals the rights that they deserve. Um, and it's for people like this that rights for animals have grown and have gotten to a certain extent but it's not where they need to be and the overall idea that he states and makes it clear is that the problem that these people that are part of this movement is not because animals die because that's normal in society it's that the suffering and the suffering that humans cause on these animals for the benefit of our usage is what the main issue of our society when it comes to animal rights is and that's something that's really important that I think that he clearly stated in this video. Then we have the goals of the animal rights movement and although this might already seem very clear by this point it's something that I think when is heard and when is put into perspective that makes it easier to understand the importance that this movement has. So First, we have to stop the suffering of animals all over. So I think that this is important because it's not just one animal or one type of animal. It's all of the animals that deserve to not suffer. Um, then we have every animal with a will to live has the right to live without pain and suffering. And I think the way this is worded is very powerful that these animals have the same need and same will to live. Um, that we as humans have, but we take that away from them for the selfish benefit that we as humans make. Um, then we have, it challenges society's traditional views that all non-human animals exist solely for human uses. And this is something that the uh, movement stands for, I think is one of their main points, is that animals were not put on this planet and were not put on this earth for the use of people um and i think this is one of the main goals that this rights movement has and this is a question to put in perspective um it's if you would eat a dog if you wouldn't eat or hurt a dog then why would you do that to a pig they are capable of the same pain they are capable of the same emotion um but we as a society has deemed it normal to do one thing to another but then to love and care um, another animal. And overall, the animal rights movement is trying to say that all these animals should be treated the same rights that we give certain domesticated animals like dogs and cats. Um, that the animal rights movement is just standing for the rights of animals. Hi, my name is Ariana Tyler, and I'll be discussing how people can get involved in the animal rights movement, as well as the organizations that are affiliated with this movement. First, let's begin by discussing practical ways to start fighting for animal rights. The steps that I have outlined below are provided by the co-founder of Sentient Media, Grant Lingle. The first thing you can do is educate yourself on animal rights issues. You can look up information about the movement, consider the facts that you learn, and get the gears turning as to what these facts mean. Um, the better informed you are, the bigger impact you can eventually make. The second thing you can do is be willing to make lifestyle changes. This could be changes to your diet as well as your consumer habits. When it comes to your diet, you can adopt the vegan or vegetarian diet as well as decreasing the overall intake of animal products that you consume on the regular. The, when it comes to your consumer habits, you can not buy products tested on animals as well as products that come from animals. And that would be items such as furs and leathers. This can be done in a simpler way um, by looking for cruelty-free labeling on the products that you buy. The third thing you can do is get involved. This could be donating to an organization, and the donations could be monetary or just donating your time to help spread the awareness for this cause. 
you can also use your voice. And what this means is just utilizing your talents and your strengths to spread awareness of animal rights issues. Here are some of the organizations that are affiliated with animal with the animal rights movement. So the first three come from the website Voice of the Voiceless, and the descriptions are given by Josephine Sussman. The first organization is the Animal Aid. Um, this organization was founded in 1977, and it is a it is a British organization. Uh, they work towards stopping cruelty against animals and have campaigned for promoting a lifestyle where animals won't be mistreated. They expose the cruelty of animals and seek justice for them. The second organization is the Coalition to Abolish Fur Trade. This is also known as CAFT. CAFT began in 1990. They search for farms, retailers, and slaughterhouses where animals are treated badly and their furs are traded. They expose these activities to authorities. The third one is Cruelty Free International, CFI. CFI works towards banning all kinds of animal research. This organization was founded over 100 years ago, and it really works towards just protecting the rights of animals and making sure they are treated ethically. And the fourth one is Sentient Media. Sentient Media is a media site that informs the public about animal agriculture, as well as current events surrounding animals and their rights and certain issues that are surrounding animal rights. The, fourth, the fifth one is an interesting one. It's called Ethical Farming Fund. It kind of takes a different uh, perspective on the animal rights movement. It's the perspective of farmers, uh, mainly local farmers, uh, not the uh, industrial livestock type of farming. Um, Ethical Farming Fund discusses the benefits of humane farming and the overall benefits it has on human health, animal health, and as well as the health of the planet. So here are the discussion questions. The first one is, what steps can be taken to raise animal rights awareness in your community? And the second one is, is it ethical to eat animal products and fight for animal rights? And, and here is our sources slide, and that will conclude this presentation. Thank you for listening, and I hope you were able to take away more knowledge and information when it comes to the animal rights movement.